Hello people, this is Fortnite Splish Splash, very much welcome to my channel and we are playing some more Lawbreakers. I have some good news, Lawbreakers is now open beta and it will be open until July 5th. For those of you that don't know much about Lawbreakers, I have done a video before when I played the closed beta and I'm putting a card here so you can check it out if you want to where I'm talking about the game in general. But this time we will meet a certain character, but before I do that, I also wanted to say that the devs have added a new map into this open beta and also a new uh, game mode called Uplink. Well, we will take a look into it, but uh, mostly I will talk about the character Enforcer in this video. The Enforcer is a class that I do think is a pretty good class to start with if you haven't played Lawbreakers before, especially if you're used to that kind of soldier character, almost like Soldier 76 in Overwatch. Although there are differences and we will talk about them right now. In Lawbreakers you have two sides, either Law or Breakers, and when it comes to the Enforcer character, you're either playing as a dude called Kintaro, which is the Breaker character, and Axel, which is the Law character. In Lawbreakers, each character has some really cool weapons and abilities that you can, especially when you start to master them, have really fun, have good gameplay, and by doing that, helping your team to achieve the sweetest fruit of them all, which is a victory. The primary weapon of the Enforcer is a weapon called the Aerator. I hope I pronounced that right. Now, this is a cool gun, definitely. Again, if you played as Soldier characters before, I think you will get the hang of it pretty soon, how to use it, when to burst, or just to use default automatic fire. Now, a cool thing with this is something I didn't know before, but I started to realize it when I had played for a time with the character, is that when you get to a point where the magazine is starting to get empty, you actually get a side effect which will increase your stopping power, making your last bullets a bit more lethal, and also encourage you to keep that spray going if you're close quarter, or that burst as well if you're doing a more like long range shots. The secondary weapon that I unfortunately don't use in this gameplay is called the Badger. This is something that is uh, a kind of electroshock weapon and it's supposed to be effective in close range. Again, I have to try this out a bit more. When you have been playing, getting points, scores, etc., you will get something called Bloodhound Launcher, which is actually seen up on the left corner in the video. And this is a really cool uh, shoulder mounted launcher. And this is a lock-on launcher and it's pretty good in combination with your primary weapon. You can definitely take out enemies quite fast if you know how to use that kind of combo. Another thing that is quite useful is the Electromag Charge, which is a nade, you might say. You can see me use it quite often in this game. That almost works like a stun, you might say. This is very useful, especially when you have a bunch of enemies uh, being like clustered together. Because what happens is that they disrupt the nade disrupt the enemy systems so they can't use their abilities for a certain amount of time and that goes for any opponent that actually get caught within the uh, energy field you also have something an ability called distortion field this is like expanding some controlled bursts of of energy that actually allows the enforcer to manipulate local gravity around him. When you get the combo, meaning movement together with this uh, distortion field, you can definitely throw off the enemy, so to speak, and get an advantage. Uh, and I think that goes for every kind of ability or the combos using the weapons together with melee in this game. I think it's really well done and, and interesting to learn. It can definitely give a different kind of combos to take out enemies and uh, become a better player overall. I mentioned that there's a new game mode here in the open beta and this is called Uplink, a kind of capture the flag style mode. I like this kind of game mode and I do think that this can be a lot of fun to play together with friends, team up and have a good time. However, right now in the open beta you can, if you want to, have a whole team of one character, which I think is a bit dangerous when it comes to a game mode like this. You can choose one of these fast moving fast-paced moving characters and you can dominate, get the uplink and bring it straight into uh, the enemy's goal or base you might say to score. Maybe there should be something for the future in Lawbreakers similar to Overwatch when it comes to social matchmaking or casual gameplay uh, versus competitive. 
So you have the chance when you're playing like social that you can choose whatever character you want. You can be how many you want of the same character. But when it comes to more ranked gameplay or such, you are limited to only have one of each or something similar. But there is a problem right now in the beta and that is due to the unbalance between some of the characters. There's just, you know, hard to find ways to counter some of these fast-paced characters. So either they need to slow them down a bit or give the other characters some ability to actually slow them down in order to counter their movements. In my first close beta video I mentioned the possibility to do customization and stuff. Now already here also in the open beta they've started to add some more stuff when it comes to customization. For example you can get this kind of special beta participant sticker that can be earned if you finish five matches. So I can definitely see also a kind of value, player value for those that like to have a lot of abilities to customize not only your character but also when it comes to uh, the guns, the camos and like stickers and stuff. Uh, I I think this is going to be also an interesting feature for the future when it comes to lawbreakers. I also wanted to say when it comes to the experience of playing both the closed beta and now the open beta that I do think that lawbreakers plays really well as a PC game and I have high hopes for uh, that to be the case also when the game is going to be released. Talking about release date, this game is set to be released on the 8th of August which is awesome because that's a point in time at least for me when I'm looking forward to a new game. And it's going to be available on PC and PS4. Uh, from what I can see right now, it's going to cost about 30 euros. So that's going to be interesting to follow up. Definitely, you would probably see a lot of Lawbreakers gameplay on my channel. It kind of suits my pocket in many ways. I will show you guys some more characters when it comes to Lawbreakers from the open beta and talk about them. I hope you find this interesting. Please let me know in the comment section if that's something that is of interest for you. I'm definitely having a blast. I hope you will get the chance to get into the open beta now since it's kind of open and let me know what you think about it here your opinions and so forth now again this was for a splish splash for your pleasure i hope you enjoyed the video and thumbs up if you did if you're new to my channel and like this kind of content don't forget to hit that subscribe button it's still free which is kind of sweet thing not many things in life are free at the moment but thanks for watching again take care there will be more lawbreakers videos coming up soon this was for a splish splash over now